Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mandir Kaur, and I'm an aerospace engineer. I'm working as aviation manager with Aircruise Aviation Private Limited. So today's topic is principle of flight. So before we begin, here is my brief introduction. Here is my bio connecting here through the link. So let's get started with the today's topic. So what is basically the principles of flight? So this presentation is all about the fundamental physical laws governing the forces acting on aircraft in flight and what effect these natural laws and forces have on the performance characteristics of aircraft. To control an aircraft, be it in an airplane, helicopter, glider, or balloon, the pilot must understand the principles involved and learn to use or counteract these natural forces. So here in this small video, you can see an airplane's uh, center of gravity. This is basically the forces which is acting on a plane and how its CG changes. So let us discover what are the basic force which acts on an aircraft. So the forces acting on an aircraft, there are generally four forces, lift, drag, weight, and thrust. So this picture is an, of an aircraft while in steady level flight, a straight and a level flight. So here we can see the upward force acting on an aircraft is known as lift. The opposite to that, the downward force which acts on an aircraft is known as weight. The, air, the force that acts in the forward direction is a thrust and opposite to that, it is drag. For an aircraft to be in steady level flight, the lift is equal to weight and thrust is equal to the drag. So what is the theories in the production of the lift? How is basically lift is generated in an aircraft? In order to achieve flight in a machine that is heavy, there are several obstacles we must observe. One of those obstacles discussed previously is the resistance to the movement called drag. The most challenging obstacle to overcome in aviation, however, is the force of gravity. A wing moving through air generates the force which is called lift, also previously discussed. Lift from the wing is the greater than the force of the gravity, direct opposite to the direct gravity, enables an aircraft to fly. Generating this is based on the law of this principle of different pressure. So what is basically a Newton's basic law of motion? Generally, an aircraft acts according to the Newton's third law, which is applied to the aerodynamics. Newton's third law states there is an equal and it reaction. So here in this paper, we can see in this picture that main is left. In the blouse, we can see the propellers connected. So this is mechanism of propeller. The air is pushed through it and pulled back by the propellers. So as a result, thrust is generated. So thrusts are basically generated with the help of propellers. So as a reaction, propeller aircraft is pushed forward. So this is how a thrust is explained. So next to that, here we have is lift. So how does lift react? As an action, the air deflected downward by the wings. So as a reaction, the wing of an aircraft are deflected upwards. So this is how the Newton's third law of motion acts according to an aircraft. In an airplane, the propeller moves and pushes back the air consequently. The air pushes the propeller and thus the airplane in the opposite direction that is forward. In a jet plane, the engine pushes a blast of hot gases backward. The force of equal and opposite reaction steady level aircraft that is lift weight drag and thrust so that, that 
suppose in the case when an aircraft is in steady motion what if there are various flight conditions such as if lift is greater than weight then the plane the effect on the plane is that the plane rises and if weight is greater so it affects the plane fall so the speed of aircraft and greater if the thrust is greater than drag then the plane accelerates so this is basically the unbalanced forces in which one force is greater than other so how it affects the motion of an aircraft suppose we have a principle of differential pressure so what is basically a bernoulli's principle bernoulli's principle states that as the velocity of a moving fluid which is a liquid or a gas increases the pressure within the fluid decreases this principle explains what happens to air passing over the curved top of the airplane wing so here in this picture it is an air fall section which is shown and the arrows here are the envelope of air passing through an air fall section so the arrows in the blue is basically the lower pressure pressure that is caused by the increased speed of an air over the wing so the air passing from the above surface of an air wall is in low in pressure and if we talk about the arrows that are in red so since the pressure is higher beneath the wing the wing is pushed upward so basically the pressure above the air, airplane airplane wing is low and the pressure below the airplane wing it is high so that is the reason why the wing is pushed upward So this is a brief description how it generated. So the blue line shows which is the air flowing through the above surface of the wing. So we have upper line. Then while it flows over the airfall surface, the pressure becomes low and it flows over a high velocity. Then it has to travel a longer distance as it is moving from the upper surface of the wing. Similarly, if we talk about the line which is in red, so here it is passing as a lower streamline and below the wing the pressure dro pressure is high and velocity drops and that is how it travels a shorter distance as compared to the so, uh, surface above the wing so this is basically the longer path or equal trans story theory so that is how a lift is generated the basic reason is the difference in the pressure over the wing so again here we have an another another photograph so the difference between the pressures at the top and the underside of causes a net upward force which is called the lift which helps the plane to take off so this is a basically the reason of the lift how aircraft generates So this is a picture which shows the factors which involves with the lift created by a wing. So here we can see an airfoil section. The cord here described means the line joining to the leading edge to the trailing edge is known as the cord. And the aircraft is traveling opposite to the wing. So the angle created by the cord line and the direction of the wing is known as the angle of attack. And just behind to the airfoil wing, we have the approximate vertical velocity of downwash. So this is the basic factors which involve with the lift created by a wing. So let's come with so what is airfoil basically? Airfoil is a strain to obtain reaction upon its surface from the air through which it will that moves past such a structure. Air acts in various ways when some different pressures and velocity. This is a moment to airfoil, we clearly into the picture. So here we can see an airfoil section at the center. The upper surface is known as the camber of the upper surface of the airfoil. The lower part is known as the camber of the lower surface. So 
the mean camber line it is basically the line which joins the leading edge to the trailing edge is known as mean camber line which is shown as red dotted line then next to that we have a leading edge which is shown as yellow in color so yellow uh, so the leading edge is the front surface of the wing and similarly the trailing edge is the uh, last surface of the wing that is known as the trailing edge then next to that we have the chord line that is the straight line which which joins the leading edge to the trailing edge is known as chord line so this is the basic nomenclature of the airfoil an airfoil is con constructed in such a way that its shape takes advantage of the air's response to certain certain physical laws this develops two actions from the air mass that is a positive pressure lifting action from the air mass below the wing and a negative pressure lifting action from the lower pressure above the wing so here in this picture we can see the three different section the first one we can see is the bar and here we can show it is shown that how air travels through the different surfaces the first one it shows that if that the air moves slow both over the upper surface as well as the lower surface of this bar so the force is acting like both in the, uh, the upward force is acting downward and the force below the surface is acting upward next to that we have another surface so the air through this surface moves fast from both of the upward as well as the lower surface the next at the last we have the air fall section so here the air travels faster from the upper surface and travels slower from the lower surface so that is how the movement of air is done along the air fall surface so many thousands of air foils have been tested in wind tunnels and in actual flight but no one air foil has been found that satisfies every flight requirement the weight speed and purpose of the each aircraft dictate the shape of its airfoil advancements in engineering have made it possible for today's high speed jets to take advantage of the concave airfoil's high lift characteristics leading edge flaps and trailing edge flaps when extended from the basic wing structure literally change the airfoil shape into the classic concave form thereby generating much greater lift during flight conditions so as we study about the airfoil so there are different kind of airfoil structure here we can see in this picture so first one is the airfoil so such airfoil shape was used earlier so that is why it is named as early airfoil then next to that as the technology increased then later than the shape of the airfoil changes into the later airfoil then we have as clark y airfoil which is basically used for the subsonic flights such airfoils are used for the aircraft which travels at subsonic speed so next to that we have the lamina flow airfoil these are also used in the subsonic flight aircraft the next to that we have circular arc airfoil so such airfoils are installed in an aircraft who travels at the supersonic speed then at last we have double wedge airfoil so these airfoil are also used for the supersonic flights so for the different purpose of aircraft different kind of airfoils are installed into such aircraft so now we will talk about the pressure pressure distribution so how the pressure distribution is being done al among the along the wing of the aircraft so the figure here shows the pressure distribution along an airfoil at three different angle of attack so first one here we have the picture in which the wing of an aircraft is at low angle of attack then next we have where the wing of an aircraft is normal at normal angle of attack and at the end here we have wing which is at high angle of attack so here in the red we can see red and blue arrows over here so that is the pressure distribution and cp here is the center of the pressure so the average of the pressure variation of an 
any given angle of attack is referred to as the center of pressure that is cp aerodynamic force acts through the cp at high angles of attack the cp moves forward while at low angle of attack the cp moves after in the design of wing structures this cp travel is very important since it affects the position of the air loads imposed on the wing structure in both low and high in low and high angle of attack conditions an airplane's aerodynamic balance and controllability is governed by the changes in the cp so now we will look about the airfoil behavior while an aircraft is in flight so as an airfoil moves through the air the airfoil is inclined against the airflow producing a different flow which is caused by the airfoil's relationship to the oncoming air so here we can see the blue area above the wing which is low pressure and just below that the surface which is below the wing is the high pressure so while an aircraft is in the motion when it when it uh, attacks to the oncoming air so at the wing tips generally vortices becomes so vortices are basically are caused due to the motion of an aircraft to the oncoming air so due to which the wing tip vortices are generated so due to this wing tip vortices vortices that increases drag into the aircraft so to reduce the effect of the drag wing tips are installed at the end of the wing section so as to reduce the drag so here at blue we can see the traditional wing so this is the large wake turbulence which means the more drag so this side of the wing do not have any winglet so that is why the more vortices are generated to this end of the airplane wing so if we look at the other side at the green so here you can see at the wing tip a winglet is installed which is also no it is which is installed at the wing tips so this wing wing with sharklet this is due to, this creates a less wake turbulence which means it creates less drag so in order to reduce the drag winglets are installed at the wing tips so here we can see how vortices are generated so when an aircraft passes through an envelope of air so the wing the vortices are created at the wing tips so here we can see the circular motion of an air which is at the behind of the aircraft so while an aircraft passes through the air the circular motion which is known as the vortices are created in the air so this is my bio you can connect me on social media also so here you can see a book which is pilot's career guide which is written by the captain shekhar gupta you can buy this book from the amazon so that was all about my today's presentation i hope you would like it thank you so much for listening me